Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm good to go. All right. Good. So welcome. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Joe Geary. I'm a community librarian at Saskatoon Public Library. And with me are Danny Ramadan, who is our current writer-in-residence, and Catherine Lawrence, who was our writer-in-residence from 2017 to 2018. Uh, before we get into this, I just want to start with the land acknowledgement. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. Um, we are all treaty people. Um, so, uh, Danny, I'll start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, yeah. Sure. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you for hosting me today on one page. I really appreciate it. My name is Danny Ramadan, and I'm a Syrian Canadian author, public speaker, and an LGBTQ refugees advocate. Uh, I published The Clothesline Swing, my first book in 2017, to um, critical acclaim. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and I just published my children's book, Salma the Syrian Chef. My uh, next book, uh, The Foghorn Echoes, a novel, uh, which is what I'm working on right now with the library, is going to be released by Penguin House in 2022. Um, before also I start, I would like to acknowledge that I'm coming to you folks from the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people, um, which, um, which is the place that we call Vancouver. As a newcomer, as a person who came here as a refugee in 2014, I am quite moved and honored that um, while I'm still an uninvited guest on these lands, the folks, the First Nations folks were quite supportive and, 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 and uh, quite um, um, standing alongside the Syrian refugees as they arrived here to Canada. I leave it to you, Catherine. How about you introduce yourself, my friend? Thanks. Thanks, Danny. And thanks, thanks Joe. Um, I've been writing for over 20 years and um, I've been living in Saskatoon um, for about 35 years. I'm originally from Hamilton. And uh, my fifth book is coming out next year with Turnstone Press. Um, my, uh, my previous book uh, called Stay is um, a novel in verse for young adults. So um, I am firmly grounded in, in, in verse, in poetry. Um, the book that's coming out next year is the manuscript that I was able to um, get a really good handle on while I was writer in residence and will perhaps talk about our our projects uh, a little later but um, no I'm just I'm just always writing and I, I still do some coaching and lead, lead workshops and um, my whole life is writing I'm very happy lovely uh, thank you both so Catherine I'll uh, start with you for the first question which mm -hmm. is what was the best thing about being Saskatoon Public Library's writer in residence well, I loved every day on that job. And I think the best uh, thing about it was uh, just just meeting the full range of, of writers. I had, I had no idea that Saskatoon harbored so many writers. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just treated um, with such uh, respect and um, by staff and and all the writers who came to see me, uh, I I can't come up with a I can't come up with a single critical mm -hmm. thing to say about the whole experience. It really was uh, one of my peak life experiences when I look back on it, and um, it just had me going. Uh, and I, from from morning to night, I was just so stimulated, so so um, taken by the by the um, sincerity and, and, and strong, strong desire to write and to learn from everyone that I met. And um, I think overall the, the experience was enormously humbling. I, I just feel like I, I learned as much as I, as I gave um, and, and, and probably I learned, I learned um, you know, I was, I was given far more than, than, than I was able to, to return. It was a very, very rich experience. Excellent. And, and Danny, so you're almost halfway through your residency already. What's uh, the best thing about being a resident for you so far? 
Well, um, it's it's I cannot I cannot agree more with Catherine to be honest. Like the community in Saskatoon is so vibrant. It's so uh, unique, and it has a lot of um, a lot of fantastic story uh, tellers to offer. And I I was overwhelmed with with how much. Uh, great work that I've seen over the last four months now uh, from the from the folks over there. Um, however, the thing that I want to actually acknowledge quite a lot is the resilience of that community. We're talking about a year that is one of the most difficult years in in recorded human history for for us as a human being, and and you find all of those folks who are engaged, who are sending art, who are creating art even when the word outside is telling them that your art is not essential. It is by, by itself, it shows a lot of resilience, a lot of love for that creative energy that we carry together. And that, that meant a lot to me. That, that meant that every time that I see somebody who's sending me uh, a transcript and I, I sit down with myself and I write the feedback and I leave them notes and then I send the email and then 10 minutes later, I'm like, I need to tell them more. I have to tell them more. It just like it, it feels because they gave so much to to the work that they 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 offered me that I need to offer them more over and over and over again. And just that resilience it, it, it brings tears to my eyes. To be honest. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, so, Catherine, what were some of the challenges that you faced while you were the writer in residence? Well, as I listen to Danny, uh, uh, I pick up on on the tremendous uh, energy that he's that he's uh, feeling and and how much work he's putting into this this position. Good on you, Danny, and 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 it makes me um, reflect on the fact that my biggest challenge was really really pacing myself. Mm. Um, I realized early in the game that it was going to be very easy for me to burn out because um, the emotional investment that that writers bring um, to their work and that you feel when you're reading it and when you're when you're meeting with them um, is enormous and and you know I always wanted to meet their honesty with my own honesty. And that takes so much um, thought and and such a such um, a generosity, I suppose, of feeling that I really had to make sure that I just went back to basics. You know, I had to make sure I had got enough sleep and enough exercise and um, limited myself to you know one glass of wine uh, <laughs> and and uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And um, made made good good nourishing pots of soup. So so back to, it was back to the basics in terms of self care for this for this girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Danny, what have some of the challenges that you faced in this position been? Uh, I mean, this <laughs> just ring mm -hmm. faintly around everywhere. <laughs> it's uh, it's again like it's a very challenging year and. Um, I got the news that I'm going to be the Brighton residence in Saskatoon in January, way before all of this uh, hit us. And I started looking for apartments and getting to know people in Saskatoon. And like, I got really, really excited because my next project is going to be set in the prairies. So I, 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 I was really looking forward to come to Saskatoon and to meet you folks and to, to be part of the community. and. Uh, to see the northern lights and like I had I had so much expectations to all of that uh, but then uh, this happened and and um, it really threw a wrench in in our plans um, I would say however like with with Joe as um, as a representative from the folks at the library uh, with the community as well we managed to find ways around those challenges uh, we came up with um, online videos and online workshops and, and novel-ish and, and uh, series of teaching things. And, and they set me up with a Zoom account, which, <laughs> which was quite needed, to be honest. So I, I would say that, yes, it was 
extremely challenging to be honest to 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 do all of this sometimes in my pajamas in uh in the uh in my office in Vancouver and trying to connect with people who are across provinces um but we did the best we could with it I think yeah no certainly the pandemic has added more challenges than would have already existed um uh, so, Catherine, give us an idea of the range of writers you've worked with in your year as the writer in residence. Oh, wow. Like, you name it. Um, our, uh, seniors, um, men and women. Um, I think I had, I'm going to guess that uh, the oldest person I had was an elderly woman. Um, who, who would have been in her, I, I'm going to say late 80s. And, um, mm -hmm. and she wanted to, uh, to come in and simply hear me read her verse to her and, and, just, mm -hmm. and just, just talk about um, uh, my, my, and just give her, you know, that feedback. Um, all the way to, you know, fiction writers, uh, like every, every genre going. And you know, probably the the youngest. There, there were some, there were some high school students who came in. Um, I, mm -hmm. The library organized um, an, an evening, uh, and they and, and the library had it pre pandemic of, um, or maybe you're doing it online now. Where on, on I think it was Wednesday nights, um, writers were invited down to to just come in and and use the facilities and write. And uh, I would keep my office open on those nights, and sometimes, you know, people would would trickle in, and mm -hmm. and sometimes those were high school students. But yeah, all genres, all ages, all stages. It was really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And Danny, t tell us a little bit about the range of writers that you've uh, worked with so far. <laughs> it's um, it's a bit. Um, sad to be honest because I looked at uh, the number of authors that came to the Saskatoon Public Library in previous uh, residence and and I think the online platform the fact that people the only way that people can communicate with me is either online um, or if they submitted their work on the in the library has limited the number of authors that I'm working with which is which is quite sad because that means that there's a lot of older folks who don't have access access to the internet, folks in places where they're not going to have that access are, um, are denied this opportunity. But at the same time, while I acknowledge this challenge, I have to say like I saw some fantastic work. Um, there was uh, an older, a uh, queer woman who sent me this sci-fi uh, chapters from her uh, novel about the, the end of the world as we know it because of a flood. And we had, um, I had this poet, um, and I'm not a poet, I'm not like the best poet there is, God knows. And I have said that repeatedly, but still they sent me poetry um, mm -hmm. That uh, wrote some fantastic poems that literally made me um, give me a shiver. To be honest, it was mm -hmm. um, so beautiful. And the, the thing that I I have to say, the thing that I I, I really appreciated about all of this is the repeated customers. Um, all of those folks who hear the feedback and then they go back home, they work on their. Uh, their work on their short story and then send it again and again and again and again. And um, I have to say, like, my favorite at the moment, just because I just read his story, Donald Campbell, um, he is this uh, older gay man who uh, wrote a fantastic story about coming out, um, a gay man coming out to his father in a longer, in a, in a later age. And I must have seen, like, five different drafts of that story. It is... Mm -hmm. And it's it's growing, it's blossoming. It is such a beautiful story, to be honest. I just I want to have a collection of short stories uh, and be the editor of it, and just collecting all of those stories and publish it for them. I have no idea how, but I will make it happen, hopefully. Lovely. Um, and your comments remind me that if you are watching this, 
and you live in Saskatoon, mm -hmm. please stop in at the Saskatoon Public Library website at saskatoonlibrary.ca. Uh, go to services, go to Red or Residence, and fill out the form, and you can get a consultation with Danny virtually because he's in Vancouver and you're going to be in Saskatoon. Um, but uh, yeah, so certainly if if you are a writer and you have not uh, used the writer resident service yet, please do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100%. But um, again, like mm -hmm. um, Catherine was saying like how there was that experience where she had her doors open for the folks who are mm -hmm. sitting outside and writing. And I'm like, I wish I had that experience. That sounds so freaking awesome. Just <laughs> sitting there like the monk of writing in my own office and they come in and they're like, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty much what it was like. Yeah. <laughs> it feels that way, right? <laughs> yeah. No, and, and hopefully, hopefully soon we'll be able mm -hmm. to get back mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. um, so my next question sort of, builds off of the last one, and that is, how did consulting with writers at all levels and critiquing their work change your own writing? Um, and with that, how did it affect your craft? Um, and Catherine, we'll start with you again. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, I don't, I would, I can't say that, um, that the experience um, changed my craft per se, um, but I think what the experience did for me was it really, um, it really reminded me that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not alone, which may, which may sound, sound odd uh, from someone who's been writing a long time and is so invested in this community. Um, but I spend so much time alone and um, the, the, the whole, the whole very nature of writing is, is um is is solitary and uh i think it just did me a lot of good to to be reminded of that community of uh, fellow travelers out there and i haven't i haven't lost that that feeling of 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 community um it it stays with me and i'm glad i'm glad i really i feel like i you know i touched its wellspring and i'm glad it's it's still it's still with me uh, often I would be talking to writers who, um, in addition to just, you know, wanting feedback on, on their material, also wanted to just talk about um, how I stay motivated. And that really made me think hard. And I think, or I believe it's something that I've continued to uh, consider, reflect on and stay and, and, and keep with me. And, and always I'm, you know, separating the, 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 the necessity for me to write and not worry about what happens to it from the whole other side of things, which is sending it out and, and dealing with rejection. Um, so that's, that's very real for, for every writer, no matter, no matter what stage they're at. But I think I would summarize this long rambling answer, Joe, by saying that the experience had a wonderful, humbling, and leveling effect on, on me as a, as a human. Mm. I agree with that. I agree with that quite a lot, actually, Catherine. I think we as writers, we have the tendency to, um, to hide in our caves and, and, and write on our own, and then we end up just going into the spiral of, are we, are we good writers? Are we enjoying our writing? Is the, are, do we have a case of writer's love when we love our own writing? Do we have a case of writer's block when we can't put two words together? Um, and, and negotiating writing, I think it's really, honestly, it feels like a negotiation sometimes. When you mm -hmm. sit with another writer and they share with you their, their, their most precious pieces and they're like, do you like this? And I'll be like, I, 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 need to, I need to show you love to it because clearly you have a lot of love to it. And at the same time, I need to give you feedback. So that's uh, because that's my job. And that's how, that's how I help you make you feel um, evolved in your writing. So, so it feels like a negotiation, to be honest. And 
And I appreciated that too, because we are writers, yes, we tend to like write and we get driven by our own talent. And sometimes we just forget to pull that essay book, open it and talk about craft for a minute. We uh -huh. just forget to do that about our, for ourselves. So the opportunity for me to like pull uh, the, 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 the book from my shelf, open it and go through and I talk about word building with a speculative fiction writer for a minute. And then that makes me think of a, like, yeah, I need to think about that when I'm thinking about my memoir and like word building and memoir that just doesn't work together. But sometimes it does if, if you allow it to, to evolve uh -huh. that way. So, so I think, I think that it definitely taught me a lot of empathy towards, uh, towards the work that I do and towards the work that uh, others br bring me, as well as it, it's a great opportunity to be reminded that we as authors, we are craftsmen as well. We are, and I hate craftsmen because it has men in it, um, crafts people. <laughs> Makers. Makers. Sure, craft makers. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, that's a good word. Uh, <laughs> and, and sometimes we just have to, to, to look into our tools and see what we, we can evolve in ourselves as well as we look at the work of others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what su has surprised you in, in this? position as writer in residence. Danny, I'll start with you this time. I'm it, surprised that you started with me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Throw me a left field, please. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's say, hmm, I think, I think I was surprised the most with the, um, the willingness of people to join me in this virtual experience that we're doing. Uh, because mm -hmm. Joe, you know this, like we, we at the Saskatoon Public Library were the first people out there to create a virtual writer in residence. And the, the two of us with Teresa, with the rest of the team, we're sitting there and shooting darts in the dark. We don't know what we're doing exactly, but we're hoping for the best. Um, and we came up with all those different ideas of how to make it virtual. And, and then at three o'clock in the morning, I'm like, the forum needs to be updated to include pronouns. And then I email you at two o'clock in the morning, be like, include pronouns in the forum and, um, and all of that. So the, the, the surprise came when September came around after we worked so hard on creating this virtual, um, reality that we're, 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 uh, we're putting together and people are like, yeah, cool. Also that, that, that works. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's, uh, um, you're releasing a 10 minutes video once every two weeks about cr uh, craft. Great. We will watch it 10,000 times. It is, it is fantastic that way. So it just, it feels, I, I felt validated to be honest. Like I was, I was surprised and validated because we put a lot of work you, me, and Teresa be between May and, and August to come up with this idea of a virtual reality that we created. Mm -hmm. And 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 it worked. It yep. somehow worked. Yep. Catherine, what surprised you in your term? I think it was the workshops. Um, mm -hmm. I thought that I would just do a couple of workshops, but I, I realized um, quickly that I wasn't going to be able to keep up with the one-on-one -on -one consultations um, mm. unless I was able to to bring more people together uh, just for the sake of efficiency and a way to let um, people who you know I had who wanted you know more than three or four consults to start coming into workshops. Um, so the workshops. Um, went over really well and and I'm not a you know I'm not a, an educator I wasn't trained as an educator so the workshops uh really challenged me and um I love and I I was surprised by how much I loved standing there and and not you know leading or uh, uh facilitating these workshops and I was surprised by uh the fact that they always filled up 
and that mm -hmm. people would come in the evening or the afternoon. And uh, I used to hold them on Saturday mornings and uh, as soon as the library opened and, and, and away, away we'd go. And um, they were, they were, they were really satisfying. Um, they were really satisfying events. And, and out of those, I ended up putting together um, uh, a weekly, not, no, it wasn't weekly. It was probably once a month um, workshop for seniors. My hidden agenda was to help um, that, uh, that demographic find um, a writer's group that they could, so they could carry on after my term. And that, that's what happened. And I ran into uh, one of those women uh, last month and she told me that there's, they're still meeting. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was really fun. So yeah. yeah, I think those workshops are still on my mind. That's amazing. That is amazing. Again, jealous, like oh. friend with jealousy, but, but amazing. I'm happy for you. Yeah. The pan, the pandemic is just so, so hard. Just yeah. so hard on every, on every level. But no. you know, yeah. I read, I read um, uh, Zadie Smith's collection of essays called Six Intimations. Oh, you've got it there, Danny. Right here, my friend. Okay, excellent, excellent. So the last s, I think it's the last essay in that collection. She talks about. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the collection, uh, she published this just um, in the early months of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So she, she's, she was reflecting on how this pandemic is um, affecting her uh, and her family and her work and everything, her entire life, of course. Anyway, she says that pre-pandemic, when someone would ask her, um, why do you write? She would come up with this long convoluted explanation about, you know, how she finds, you know, meaning in life and, how, how writing helps her understand herself and blah, blah, blah. And since the pandemic, it, uh, her answer has come down to, it gives me something to do with my time. And I love that answer because throughout this pandemic, I've been saying, what on earth would I be doing if I didn't have this writing practice? Thank <laughs> what would I be doing with my time? Mm -hmm. So I just, I just think, uh, Here's what uh, Danny would be doing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> um. So where where I'm going with this is, I think that that the library's commitment to the to this program during mm -hmm. a pandemic is mm -hmm. absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Danny, you're playing a uh, an extraordinarily important role um during during this period because people are still writing and we still we still need to reach out to people like you so 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 uh, good on you i know and i can appreciate how challenging it is but good on you that. i appreciate what you're saying i really do thank you so much for putting it that way it's it's it is challenging i i have to say like it is something that i think about constantly because I'm a type A, I'm, perf I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my work and I, I wish I'm there. I wish I can throw the workshops. I, I, I wish I can do more. And like, honestly, if you looked at what I'm doing, honestly, I'm doing quite a lot, which is, which is amazing. I'm happy that I'm doing the work that I'm mm -hmm. doing and I'm happy that people are watching the videos, seeing the interviews, uh, seeing the public salon. Um, it just, there is, there is a beauty to be held when you're standing there and you say something about craft and then somebody at the end of the room look at you and they're like, <gasps> and then they start taking notes. There is, the, that moment is just so freaking precious. It is the most beautiful moment ever. That, 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 that transcendent moment when someone is get something that you're trying to to show about something that is so fluid like writing because teaching writing is one of the most difficult things in the world you can teach mm -hmm. math you can say like two plus two equals four and it's always going to be two plus two equals four but teach writing is like saying two plus two equals an apple and if you don't like it it can be it, it can equal an orange and if you don't like it it's a rainbow so it's, it's it is just 
so fluid as as a craft yet there is a moment of of when you break that barrier when you break that ability to to that inability to see writing as that creation that you have that i just appreciate and i think i think this all of this the fact that i'm talking to you i'm literally in my office like i i talking to a wall while <laughs> while you are here in in front of me at the at the camera is is interesting i just say it is interesting um mm -hmm. i'm sure it will we are going to see a lot of memoirs about this couple of uh, couple of years i am sure and they're all going to have a lot of interesting challenging uh, stories to tell i would say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I just I feel sad. I just I just feel for the for the for the challenges that that attend that attend the the position. Well, Danny, what bad. Danny, Danny, um, what are you, Joe? I'm stepping in here. <laughs> Danny, what are you doing to um, to maintain your your joie de vivre and your 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 spirit because you you despite the sadness that you're you're sharing i do sense that you really do uh love this gig you're ha you're having a good time in your own way with this no i don't want you to get me wrong i'm loving this gig this is yeah, i can tell i i i love working with the team at the saskatoon public library i've never sent an email that wasn't responded to in 20 minutes uh the folks are there for me um Joe is right here, like there's another computer right here that is Joe is on Skype with, so he's literally everywhere in my life. Um, it, is, um, it is a lot of fun to create those videos, to try to find, it's, it's a puzzle. It's a beautiful puzzle. There is a way for me to give my all to this community, and I do want to give as much as possible to this community. Um, and I, every now and then I'm like, I can do this, and then I I come in with this idea, and the folks at at uh, at the library are always um, yes and me, like they always be like, yeah, let's do this and do that more with it. So I'm I'm really enjoying it. I really am. I think um, as I said, like I I do want to acknowledge the challenges. This is the kind of person I am. I like to acknowledge the challenges, but at the same time, I like to say like. Honestly, like with no ego whatsoever, I think I'm rocking it. I think I'm doing a fantastic job at the uh, at the Brighton residence. I you are, you are, and in <laughs> fact, I I I've run into a few people that have been working with you, and uh, they've got nothing but great things to say. So I mean, it's it's you know you've you're, you've created great buzz in the community. I'm sorry that I don't get to take you out for coffee and have you into my house. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. All of this is coming from my little office here in Vancouver. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I would say I have that. I like I. Hmm, I went through a lot of challenging time in my life. I'm sorry, my thing. I went through a lot of challenging time in my life, uh, but I would say that what kept me sane is that I always look for the best way possible to to see the world around me. I. I try my very best to look for ways to make a good situation better and a bad situation bearable. And if I can't, I play video games. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so so t tied in with what you, the two of you were just talking about, um, one of the ideas for this one page program was that Catherine, you did the Redner residency in person, primarily, I think you may have taken a few phone calls and, and you know consulted with people that way, but mostly it was like in person, one on one. And Danny, yes. it's all been virtual for you, so it's all been over the phone or over Zoom or over Skype. And uh, and one of the the things with one page is that we've gone from primarily in person writing and literary festivals now to online festivals, which one page is all about um and, and hence sort of why i invited both of you to talk because one of you 
is very much in the in-person rather than residency and one is very much in the virtual. Um, and, uh, and so the, the next question I have for both of you is, how does the virtual compare to the in-person? And, and I know that Danny and Catherine, your experiences with it are primarily only in one, <laughs> but talk a little bit more about sort of that split. Um, and I, I, whichever of you wants to start first, you can. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure what else um, we can add, Joe, um, mm -hmm. because as you uh, point out correctly, while I was right in residence, um, you know, I met with everyone, um, you know, at you know, uh, one, face face to face in groups mm -hmm. or one to one, um, and I. So in in this pandemic, though, I mean, I continue to 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 coach uh, writers. Um, so I've had a long standing um, coaching relationship with a woman in Winnipeg. We we simply moved from phone to Zoom. In that case, it, it's, it enhanced uh, the whole experience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and others I'm, I am meeting uh, by, via Zoom. And it, it's, it's certainly different, but what remains the same is uh, what Danny and I were talking about earlier was the mm -hmm. commitment and the intensity and the need. Um, it, that, that, does, that doesn't change regardless regardless of the, of the medium or the platform. Mm. Uh, so I find like Danny, I'm still reaching for my, my tools on the bookshelf. And mm. I always feel grateful to be reminded of, um, of those, of those uh, tools of the craft. And they always have a way of spilling over in, in, into my, into my own work, just as, as Danny was, was saying. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think, I think of course, um, there is, there's positives and negatives in everything. And, um, to look at it any other way is, um, to be a bit of a fool, to be honest, because literally everything out there has some positives and negatives. And, <clears throat> And in-person meetings means that literally I'll be sitting in my office trying to finish an email and somebody could knock on the door and, and walk in and somebody, I, I lose my train of thoughts or won't be able to write something or whatever. Um, but at the same time, in-person meetings means that I'll be sitting in my office at the Saskatoon Public Library and literally somebody who walked in to borrow a book will read a brochure about me and then 10 minutes later, we're having a very intense conversation about that one. So it is, it has its positives and negatives. Same goes for the virtual. The virtual means that uh, not a lot of people, not um, a certain per percentage of people are um, incapable of accessing my work. But at the same time, I can't tell you how many times I'll be on Zoom having a conversation with Donald, and then I'll be like, hold on. And then I send him a PDF file uh, about something that is in, in the conversation that we're having. And then I share my screen and start to highlight things and tell him like, this is what I mean. And this is, uh, this is the example from that book, for example. Um, I'm literally sitting, my bookshelves are right here. So <laughs> uh, midway through a conversation, I could be like, oh, that book by Khaled Hosseini, I can grab that book by Khaled Hosseini and show you the book and you will be, um, and we can go together to the public library's website and find if it's available in a branch near you. So there is, there is definitely some negatives to the fact that I am in my pajamas in Vancouver, but also there is definitely some, some positives of the accessibility of the internet and what, what it can offer us, to be honest. Um, so at the beginning of this, you both talked a little bit about what you wrote during residency, Catherine, what you're currently writing, Danny. Um, 
but now let's circle around to that <laughs> and get more into depth. Uh, so tell us about the writing projects that you worked on during the residency or are currently working on. Um, and Catherine, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm, thanks. Um, so I was able to finish um, a manuscript of, of poems and then um, it was accepted um, by uh, Turnstone Press out of, out of Winnipeg. And due to the COVID, due to the pandemic, um, its release date has been um, pushed back uh, by a year. Um, so uh, taking a, um, a page out of Danny's book, there are positives and negatives to that. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to do an in-person launch. And, um, and also this is giving me more time to, to uh, return to those, those poems. So actually, you know, right now I'm, I'm, um, they're waiting for another draft of the, of the manuscript. So I'm, you know, reordering um, the, the poems and looking at the whole thing and editing and, and um, just bearing down on, on that whole project. And uh, I'm trying to have it out the door by the, end of this week so that I can catch my breath and then return to um, something that I've been working on for quite a while. I'm not sure where it's, where it's going. It's um, just, just playing with, um, with creative nonfiction, I think. So I'm, I'm looking forward to going back into, into the sandbox pretty soon, play around. So that, that's what I'm up to. What about you, Danny? Uh -huh. Um, so I'm ahead of schedule, which is interesting to be. Um, so when I applied to this position in November last year, um, September last year, I think, um, I said that I'm going to be working on my novel, The Foghorn Echoes, and a collection of short stories. And then over the summer, <laughs> I had uh, a miraculous amount of uh, time to spend <laughs> because I, was, I wasn't doing anything else in my life because of the pandemic. And I actually finished the Foghorn Echoes, sent it to the agent, and it sold out to Penguin last um, last month, which which means that for the next six months, me and David Ross, my editor at uh, Penguin, we're going to uh, finalize it for publication in 2022. Um, <clears throat> I also was supposed to be working on a collection of short stories which I am I'm really in love with. It is, I would say, around 70% done. But then uh, the folks at Penguin wanted a memoir, so I am going to be sitting down and writing a memoir instead. Um, and I, uh, it is still untitled. God knows I come up with a new title once a day. And then I text my husband quite uh, aggressively, being like, listen, 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 listen. What about this? And he'll be like, oh, that's cool. And then 10 minutes later, I'll, I'll email, I'll text him being like, no, it is bad. It's the worst. I'm not taking, and then like go into another spiral. So we're, um, we're going through some, sh some stuff at the moment, I would say with the, uh, with the memoir. But I think, I think I will be able to have a first draft by the end of this residency. Great. Great. Congratulations on the Penguin contract. That's fantastic. Thank you. I'm really happy about it, to be honest. It is, uh, um, honestly, I, I put three years of my life into this novel, and I was doing nothing but writing this novel. Um, I had, in our previous apartment, I painted a whole wall uh, with, uh, with chalk paint, so I can write on it and draw stuff on it, which was not amusing to my husband either. Um, <laughs> but I ended up with a lot of geometrical uh, shapes to how the novel is going to be uh, built. And then I cr created an outline and then I got my mentor involved. And it's three years of work, to be honest, that, um, that resulted in something that I'm really, really proud of. So well, good for you. I would like it too. We'll good see. for you. Thank you. I appreciate it, Catherine. So you've both talked already about how the pandemic has affected your writing. Um, how has it affected your reading, if at all? Are you reading different books? Are you reading more? Are you reading less? Hmm. I love that question. Um, I, just, I just love it. 
for, for, for two reasons. One is, um, this was something that I, that I learned while I was writer in residence. I could always tell who the readers were. Mm. And often, well, no, always, um, I would ask somebody um, what, what they're reading. Uh, because reading, like you just, you just can't, you just can't write if you don't read. And um, so always we're talking about books and always I was recommending books. And, and so discussions about books always were as important as the, as the work itself. And then for me personally, um, I'm, I'm, I'm reading all the time. And I recently read an interview in the Paris Review um, about the contemporary American fiction writer whose name is Alice McDermott. Mm. And I had not come across her before. And so I've just finished reading four of her novels. I mean, this is what I do. I find somebody I love and then I just have to read, um, just do a swan dive, I get obsessed. Um, so uh, I've just finished reading Alice McDermott and I'm looking at a collection of poems by um, Alice Oswald that a friend gave me, wonderful collection. And, um, and I was just uh, uh, to, down the, at the library this afternoon, actually, to pick up mm -hmm. a hold, uh, uh, the new novel by, uh, by Sue Miller called uh, Monogamy. So, you know, there's, all, there's, always, there's always lots uh, on, on my table. And of course, like, um, like every reader in, uh, in, the, in the English speaking world, we all want to get our hands on, um, on the on the book that won the won the Giller uh, How to Pronounce Knife. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, for me, to be honest, um, I would say that I haven't before the pandemic. I wasn't reading as much as I wanted to read. Uh, I was reading, I would say, a book or two a month. I wasn't reading as much as I was hoping to read. And then the first month of the pandemic, I spent a lot of time on Netflix, I have to say. I spent a lot of time eating cheesecake and watching Netflix. That's literally what I did in March. Um, <laughs> gained 19 pounds, which is the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, got numb in the eyes. I, I just couldn't watch Netflix anymore. So I came into a personal challenge of mine. So I decided that from now until the uh, the time that I get vaccinated, I'm going to read a hundred books by uh, authors of color. So mm -hmm. I am on 36, 37 books by now, which is amazing. I have been, like in eight months reading 36 books is amazing. I just finished Eden Robinson's uh, Trickster Drift. Uh, before it, I was reading Summer Habib's We Have Always Been There, uh, been here. Uh, before it, I was reading uh, Dragon Spring Road, no, um, The Library of Legends by Jamie Chang. Um, the book that I'm reading at the moment is Exit West by Mohsen, 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 Mohsen. Um, I haven't heard that. Hmm. Oh, Exit West. It won, uh, it won the Booker, I would say, in 2010, 2012. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's really good. It's really, really good. I'm in love with it. It is uh, such a great uh, third person uh, ominous voice. Like he knows all of the characters really, really well. And he jumps in the same paragraph between different, different character perspectives. And that by itself is just like mind blowing. Mind -blowing. Yeah. He is so good, Master Hamid. Um, it's called Exit West. And next on my book is How to Pronounce It. It's it's on my Kindle. I am going to read it the minute I finish Exit West. What are you reading, Joe? Oh yeah. Uh, well, I, I am listening to the Wheel of Time series. Uh, so by Robert Jordan. Uh, it's a fantasy series. There are fourteen books. Um, Anyway, I, I won't get too in depth about them, but I'm, I'm on the fourth one, and I've been listening to that one. I've also been—I uh, just started reading the best science fiction annual collection, the first annual collection from 1984, which has 1983 stories, and that was the first 
one that Gardner Dazwa edited. Um, he had been an editor long before that, but this is the first annual collection of the. Mm. Um, and the the sort of the challenge, and this is actually set up by a, a podcast called the Coot Street Podcast. They were talking about uh, this 84 collection compared with the most recent collection, uh, which is actually edited by uh, Jonathan Strawn, um, and comparing sort of what the science fiction field looks like between the early 80s and now. Um, so that's going to that's gonna be a longer project, because <laughs> there are lots of short stories in both of those collections. Um, anyways, so that's what I'm reading, very briefly. That's um, interesting. Amazing. You know, uh, my, my husband, Matthew, I think you and Matthew are going to get along so well. Mm -hmm. uh, he decided to reread um, all of Isaac Esmov's uh, foundation books, mm -hmm. uh, all 11 of them, I think. Wow. There are quite a few, yeah. Yeah, so he is in the midst of... Uh, the third or the fourth at the moment, it's because Foundation is being turned into a TV series. So he's like, I better remember everything before we watch the show. Yeah. You know, you know listening to you, Joe, I'm reminded that another way that the, the pandemic has affected my reading is I have um, become a great fan of audiobooks because I'm walking so much more mm -hmm. um, and, I, uh, and I'm easily bored. Um, you know, I'm just I'm just using the the, the library's um, Libby, and mm -hmm. uh, you know I've been able to to walk with Rebecca Solnit, and uh, that's that's been that's been wonderful. Yeah, no uh, audiobooks have, and again, this is a whole tangent that I could spend hours talking about, but they have seen such an increase in usage, not not just during the pandemic, but over the last couple of years, because we have a lot of people who commute from Saskatchewan. In right. Saskatoon, and so as people have been able to listen to electronic audiobooks in their vehicles, like as the technology has sort of just been built in, mm -hmm. we've seen a huge rise in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the Library to Go collection, which is our overdrive collection, mm -hmm. has most of mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I, I sure I sure hope that that people in in care, retirement homes, care homes, you know, mm -hmm. are are or have access to audio books, you know, those, mm -hmm. that, that demographic is so isolated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we, we have book deposits with a lot of homebound readers. Yeah, so. I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with all of that, are there any questions that you would like to ask each other? When can we have coffee, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> but, but wait a minute. But I want, I want coffee and cheesecake. Oh, don't tempt me. I'm starting <laughs> to lose the, 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 the COVID-19. <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, but yes, I will make an exception for cake with you, for cheesecake with you. I would definitely do. Um, I think I, I, I talked to the folks at the library, like even if um, my, my term ends end of May and, and probably from now until the end of May, I'm not going to make it to, to Saskatoon. Uh, we have, I'm pretty sure that is not going to happen, which is quite sad, but it is what it is. Uh, but I talked to the team and I told them like, I would love to just come and visit even for a weekend. Like just after you don't even need to like um, worry about anything. I'll plan the whole thing. Just give me a hall and I'll come in and do an event there. And and I think I think definitely the minute all of this is calmed down and we can we can resume whatever new normal that is going to 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 emerge out of this. I'm get definitely going to to make it to Saskatoon and then we can have cheesecake and coffee. Well, I think that's essential because there is um, there is a, a blue navy blue bound dictionary sitting in the office mm. of of the uh, of the writer in residence downtown, and every writer in residence um, going right back to the beginning has signed it. So you have to come to Saskatoon just so that you can enter your name in that book, Danny. It's essential. I would love to. Uh, Joe, if I didn't, you just have to mail it to me and I'll sign it and then I'll keep it. <laughs> <laughs>
if it comes down to it, uh, post COVID nineteen, uh, I may have to travel out to Vancouver. And anyway, we'll, we'll figure that out after the pandemic. Okay, good house. Okay, <laughs> okay. You've got Joe's word, and I'm your witness. Awesome, awesome. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and um, um, Catherine, what are we're about to be done with 2020 and 2021 is not going to magically change everything. Like it's not going to be happy new year and COVID-19 is going to be like, bye, it just goes away. Um, what are your hopes for 2021? What do you hope to see for yourself, for your community in 2021? Uh, just, you know, for my, for my community, just, just deep, deep healing from, from all the suffering that, that everyone is, is going through uh, a return, a return to you know full employment for those that have lost their jobs and mm -hmm. oh man, I just it's just there's just heartbreaking situations out there. I just I just want people to to heal and and, and recover. Um, I'm I'm fine, you know. My husband, our family, you know, we're 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 fine. We're we're just we're healthy. I just I just want to. I just want healing as we, as we, as we move forward. That's, that's a beautiful, I think that's a beautiful end to this conversation. I'll give it back to you, Joe. Yep. Um, so here at the end, uh, would either of you or both of you like to read some of your work briefly? <laughs> sure. Okay. Sure, go for it, Rachel. Right, right, never say no to that invitation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Catherine, if you'd like to start. Sure. Um, this this is a, a poem called "Lost." It's uh, going to be in my in my new collection, and um, I chose it because um, the 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 demographic that I that uh, really really. Um, tugs at my heart are those uh, the seniors who are um, in in uh, care homes and who can't be in touch with with their loved ones and um, I have a family member who's in that situation and uh, uh, this isn't about her but it's um, it speaks it speaks to um, it was written before the pandemic but it speaks to um, to this to this situation in a way Oh, wait, I know what I need to do. Change glasses. <laughs> Esther tried to leap the balcony of her 10th floor condo to escape the man in the kitchen, the husband whose face she lost, along with the names of her children, and grandchildren, and the constellations she'd identify in the night sky as we all sat outside on deck chairs, our necks craned, Summer blankets draped across bare legs while crickets sang the undergrowth. Now her husband scouts a nursing home, sets Esther down like a glass vase. It's hard to be human, he, he tells me. I don't know what to say except sorry. I am sorry that we're not trees because the poplar knows how to poplar, the maple how to maple. A tree grows with all it needs to know. Branch, leaf, light, the coming dark. Thank you. Oh, lovely, lovely. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so I made a very um, in the moment decision and I'm going to read you poetry as well which I never do, so uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. This is a poem called uh, Seatbelts. I didn't believe in God back when I was a hitchhiker picked by whomever stops to hold the candle of my youth for moments that lasted and other that died and dropped by the doors of an old Damascene mosque and told I'm not worthy of the sheets my body stained. Shotgun seats were my only option, holding on to a seatbelt that cannot be fastened and waiting for the breaking to thrust my back. I wondered if maybe he got to know me better. 
he would believe in me so much that I will be lifted to his skies and welcomed through an open door that cannot be locked by angels and demons. I was abandoned to sleep in the corner of the Umayyad Mosque, yet when the lights went out and midnight approached, I was noticed by the guards of the guard and I was left alone with him for the night. So I walked on the cold ceramic floors and gathered dough in my socks and I looked up and I asked God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? These prayers, these prayers are never answered by night creatures. Yet I find me resting asleep until the early morning comes and I'm awake to hear the muezzin sing. I spend the day tracing the fainting steps of my ancestors engraved on the walls of the mosque and I wish, washed my hands three times and wet my face three times and let the water drop down to my elbows three times and I threw away my wet socks and let my feet dry on the soft red carpet. I rested, I rested my back on the wooden stairs and I was engulfed by candlelight. I didn't pray, but I knew that when I sat there in that corner surrounded by my grandmothers who passed, that I'm on a path that required no faith and that God might not believe in me, but he can see that I'm trying. He can see that I'm trying. Thank you. Oh, that's beautiful. What do you mean you're not a poet? <laughs> it just, just uh, scares me. I don't know. It just really scares me. I don't like it. Poetry, poetry scares you? Oh, to the max, you have no idea. It's, it's, uh, it freaks me out. Um, there's something about, it's, it's not so much a memoir, like memoir and being personal in memoir. A memoir is something that I can control. I can control my narrative. I can tell you a good story. I can also show you um, the, the ups and downs of my story without allowing that, that, that sympathy, that pettiness to come across when I tell you a difficult story. But then when I tell you a poem, I'm leaving a lot in your hand, don't I? I'm leaving a lot of your, in your ears basically for you to fill the gaps and I feel a bit naked when I do that. Oh, that's very, very interesting. Send me your poems, Danny. Send me your poems. <laughs> Join us. Join the dark side. <laughs> oh, I want to hear. I want to hear more. I want to hear more. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, with that, although it feels like we could talk for a few more hours uh Thanks. i think we have to wrap it up there so mm -hmm. thank you so much both of you thank you for thank taking you. part in this yeah uh thank yeah thank you joe this has, mm -hmm. this has been a lot of fun this has been great and danny keep up the good work loved thank loved you. meeting you oh thank you Catherine. i really appreciate it it was lovely to meet you okay take care okay. be all safe right. all right take care folks bye-bye bye-bye